गुड मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रेन स्टे सेफली एट होम सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर टूडे दैट इज थर्मो डायनामिक्स और राइट नाउ इन थर्मो डायनामिक्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू नो सर्टन टर्म्स रिलेटेड विद द थर्मो डायनामिक्स दिज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स फर्स्ट इज सिस्टम इन थर्मो डायनामिक्स सिस्टम मीन्स वी कंसिडर अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ मैटर सराउंडेड बाय अ सर्फेस दैट इज नोन एज सिस्टम इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस वी टेक एन आइडियल गैस अ परफेक्ट गैस सराउंडेड विद इन अ सिलेंडर बाय अ पिस्टन ओके दैट इज जनरली कंसिडर एज अ सिस्टम सो वॉट इज अ सिस्टम a fixed amount of matter enclosed within a surface is known as the system the next uh, term is surroundings what is surroundings uh, outside the system whatever is there that we are taking into consideration are considered as surroundings all right so you may define surroundings as everything outside the system under consideration is known as the surroundings then next concept is coming isolated system isolated from the meaning of the english term only one can make out what is isolated system isolated system means surrounding has no effect on the system and in the opposite way the system cannot exchange cannot transfer anything it may be anything means maybe energy maybe mass nothing it can transfer from it to the surroundings nor it can accept anything from the surroundings that is known as isolated system so isolated system you can say that surroundings do not have any effect on the system or system cannot transfer anything to the surrounding anything means anything means it may be energy it may be mass then next concept is what is thermodynamic system the system which has a very large number of particles and which can completely described by its pressure volume and temperature is known as the thermodynamic system i repeat what is thermodynamic system the system which has a very large number of particles within it then secondly which can completely be defined by its pressure volume and temperature so thermodynamic system is what the system which is defined completely by its pressure pressure we denote it by p volume we denote it by v and temperature here when we are write uh, we are writing capital t it means the absolute temperature then the next term is thermodynamic variables the variables that we need to describe to know the study uh, to or to study the behavior of the thermodynamic system known as the thermodynamic variables and which are the thermodynamic variables pressure volume and temperature all right so you must learn and remember the definition of these important terms associated with thermodynamics the next thing related with the thermodynamics that everybody should know is equation of state equation of state means the relation between the thermodynamic variables that is p v and t associated with the thermodynamic system all right and we know that what is the ideal equation for gas that is given by p v equal to n r t p is pressure of the gas v is the volume n is the number of mole present in the gas okay what does n represent number of mole present in chemistry details you studied r is the universal gas constant and t is the absolute temperature of the system all right then the next concept is very important concept thermal equilibrium suppose you have taken two bodies at different temperature one is hot another is cold then we know that when we keep them in thermal contact then 
then what happens? The hot body it loses heat and the cold body it gains heat. In calorimetry chapter 10 standard already you studied. What happens? The heat is transferred from the hot body to cold body until and unless the two bodies come in the same temperature, attain the same temperature. And when the two bodies attain the same temperature under that condition, you know that heat transfer between the two bodies get stopped all right so this point when the there is no heat transfer between the two bodies then we say uh, two bodies are in thermal equilibrium so when we say the two bodies are in thermal equilibrium when there is no heat transfer between the two bodies in thermal contact then we say that the two bodies are in thermal equilibrium and when it takes place when the temperature of the two bodies become equal Alright, so you see how we can define temperature then. Temperature we used to define this way that temperature is the thermal state which determines the direction of flow of heat. I hope you can remember. But you see from the concept of thermodynamics, from the concept of thermal equilibrium, you can define temperature as temperature is that property from which we can determine the thermal equilibrium of a body. Alright, if a body is in thermal equilibrium, how you can determine from the property, which property that is temperature. Okay, so this is the new definition of temperature. Alright, so I have written here that thermal equilibrium is what? The two bodies said to be in thermal equilibrium when no heat is transferred between them. And under this condition, what happens? Temperatures become equal. All right. Then the next important concept is zeroth law of thermodynamics. That's why I have given put two asterisks. You know this is the sign for importance mark. Now, I first understand it. Suppose there are three bodies A, B, and C. Now here understand it. Between A, C, and B, C, there is a conducting material. What does it mean? They can exchange heat along um, uh, with C. A can exchange heat with C. B can also exchange heat with C. So you see, when A, what means what? The simple meaning is that A is in thermal contact with C. B is in thermal contact with C. But observe that. Between A and B, there is an insulator. What does it mean? A and B, they are considered isolated with respect to each other. Is that clear? Means A and B cannot exchange heat. But A and B can exchange heat separately with C. So you see what will happen? They will exchange heat with C. How long they will exchange heat? Till their temperature becomes equal. So you see here, a and B, they are separately in thermal equilibrium with C. So, one can write that temperature of C is equal to temperature of A because C and A are in thermal equilibrium. Again, C and B are in thermal equilibrium. So, temperature of C is equal to temperature of B. That's why one can say that temperature of A and temperature of B are equal. So, when they are equal, that's why you see if A and B now you separate them by a conductor, what will happen? They will be in thermal equilibrium. They will not exchange any heat. So, this one is known as the this fact, if you write in statement, then it will become the zeroth law of thermodynamics. So, what is the zeroth law of thermodynamics? If two bodies A and B are in thermal equilibrium separately with a third body C, then the two bodies A and B will be in thermal equilibrium. Alright, very easy concept and you must learn the statement of the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Now the next concept is equivalence between work and heat. We know that when we rub our hands, we do some work and then we have seen that the, our hands become warm. What does it mean? By doing some work, it can be converted into heat energy. Like that, when heat is provided to some system, then the system can do some work. What does it mean? That work and heat, they you can convert from one to other. And it has been said by Joule that work done 
if w amount of work is done and by that heat produced is h then w is proportional to h means more the work will be done more will be the heat produced so you see if you just replace the equivalent sign uh, sorry proportional sign by equal sign then there will be a constant of proportionality so you can write w is equal to j into h okay now this j is known as mechanical equivalent of it and the value of j is 4.18 joule per calorie we know this one we have studied in the lower classes that one calorie is 4.18 joule this concept it is coming from the value Value of J. All right. Remember always that J is not a physical quantity. It is not a physical quantity. Just like work done and heat produced. All right. It is just a conversion factor. All right. So this is the concept of equivalence of work and heat. But there is a basic difference. Heat is also energy and work is also energy. All right. Then what is the basic difference between heat and work done? All right. Heat is that energy which is transferred from one system to other due to the difference between their temperature. All right. Very simple to understand the difference between heat and work done. What I said that suppose there are two system having different temperature. Then what will happen? Energy will be transferred from one body to another due to the difference between their temperature. So that is the heat energy. All right. But when energy is transferred between two bodies, between two system, not due to the temperature difference, then that energy is known as the work done. Simple example, suppose you uh, have taken certain amount of liquid and you are stirring it up very vigorously. Then what will happen? Your energy will be transferred as work within it, uh, within the system. And if you stir a liquid continuously, then you will see that temperature of the liquid increases. Is that clear? So you see here, energy is transferred from you to the liquid, not due to the difference between the temperature all right so this energy is known as the work done okay so heat and work done although they are equivalent but there is a basic difference so what is the basic difference you must write down and remember i have not written that heat is that energy which is transferred between two bodies due to difference in temperature all right, but work done is that energy which is transferred between two bodies not due to their temperature. The transfer of energy between the two bodies taking place not due to their temperature, do not depend on temperature, then that energy is known as the work done. All right, so these are the basic interesting concepts related with work and heat. Now you have to get the concept of work done in case of a thermodynamic system or in thermodynamics. Now as I said already that in a thermodynamic, in thermodynamics what is system? Certain amount, certain matter enclosed within a surface. So here you see we generally take a perfect gas it is within a cylindrical container and in the cylindrical container you see these two sides are made up of insulator and the down one is conductor so that through the down part it can exchange heat with the surroundings all right and there is a piston here and the piston is also made by the insulating material so if you consider a gas now the gas is having under certain pressure so if you consider that the gas is having under certain pressure then what will happen we know that force is given by pressure into area so due to the pressure of the gas a force will act on this so what will happen suppose if you want to keep the piston in the same position you have kept some weight here okay otherwise what will happen if you just release the weight then what will happen under the action of the pressure the piston will move up so let us consider the piston has moved up by certain amount delta x all right so why the piston is moving up? Because the force which is given by pressure into area, it is acting on the piston. 
all right so you see what will be the small work done dw whenever we add the small d with any quantity that represent a very small amount of that quantity so when i am writing dw dw it is together dw it actually represent the small amount of work done in displacing the piston by the small amount delta x all right now you know that work done is given by force into displacement, isn't it? So here, what is the force? Force is P into A and what is the displacement? Delta X. Is that clear? Delta again, either you can write down the delta sign or you can write down small d. So you see here, A into delta X. This is giving you the increase in the volume, dV. So you can write like this. A delta X, sorry, A delta X, what does it represent? It represents the change in volume. So, change in volume you can represent by dV. So, you see, in case of thermodynamic, work done is measured by this formula PdV. Is that clear? Here, actually, the concept of calculus is coming here and as the mathematical analysis part is omitted this time from your portion, that's why I'm just giving the explanation this way. Actually, dW, it is the small work done, okay? And dV is the small change in volume. In that case, how one can calculate what will be the total work done, then we integrate it. Okay, so one can integrate it like this. It will be from the volume V1 to V2 and that will be the total work done. So total work done you can find out by this method. Integrating PdV and the how to integrate the lower well, uh, the lower limit of integration will be V1 means initial volume V1 and then V2 is the final volume. Alright. So, this is these are the two expressions for calculation of work done in case of thermodynamics. Now, how you can calculate work done? Using a pressure versus volume graph. That in the work done chapter already I have discussed. So, let us find it out that if you just plot pressure versus volume graph. Now, if the volume remain constant, okay, yeah, what is happening? Volume is increasing, volume of the system, not volume remaining constant, volume of the system is increasing under constant pressure. Means when pressure is constant. In that case, the P versus V graph will be a straight line parallel to the volume axis. Alright. And what will be the work done? Work done will be area under PV graph. Alright. Already this area under v, uh, this one VT graph. Um, uh, represent displacement you studied in 9th standard so how to find out area under a graph so you have to drop perpendicular from the two ends of the graph on the x-axis so this area will give you the work done by the system okay means work how much work is done that you can find out from the area under the pv graph so here the graph is a straight line parallel to the volume axis when pressure is constant but suppose pressure is not constant in that case you know the p versus v graph will be a curve like this so in that case how you can find out what will be the work done from again in the same manner from the two ends you drop two perpendicular two perpendicular on the volume axis then you are getting a closed area that closed area will represent so if i name it like this a b c d then you see what will be the work done work done will be equal to area of a, B, C, D. Is that clear? So this is the way by the graphical method one can find out the thermodynamic work done. 
Now in case of thermodynamics, there is a sign convention for the two parameters heat and the work done. Heat we denote it by Q. When the, what are the sign convention? Understand it first. When the system absorb heat from the surroundings, system is taking some heat from the surroundings. In that case, we consider Q as positive. Alright, the amount of heat absorbed. And when the system release heat to the surroundings, meaning the system is giving heat to the surroundings. In that case, Q is considered as negative. Alright. In case of work done, when the volume of the system increases, then work is done by the system. And in that case, W is considered as positive. And when the volume of the system decreases, then the volume of the system of a, uh, of a system cannot decrease by itself. Alright, somebody else should press it so that volume decreases, isn't it? So in that case, the work is done on the system by somebody else. And in that case, W is considered as negative. So these two sign conventions are very, very important concept wise in this chapter. So you must note it down properly and you must learn and remember it. Okay. So regarding Q, what is the sign convention when Q will be positive? When heat is absorbed by the system. When Q will be negative, when heat is released by the system. Alright, like that, in case of work done, when work done is positive, when the volume of the system increases and work is done by the system. Alright, volume increases. And then when work done will be negative, when work is done on the system and volume of the system decreases then work done will be negative. Now, in case of mechanical work done, we know that work done generally for conservative forces, it does not depend on the path followed. Okay, For a non-conservative force, it depends. But in this case, you will see that if you change the path, then work done will change. Just consider this example. Suppose there is a P versus volume graph. Now here, this is the initial I. I represent the initial state of a body and F represent the final state of the body. Okay, I repeat. I represent the point. I represent the initial state and F represent the final state of the body. Okay, now you see. Suppose you are taking the system from I to F following this path. Means you have taken it from A, I to A and then to this path. Means this is the path A. I am denoting the path by A. Alright. You have taken the system from the initial state I to the final state F following this path A. Alright. What will be the work done? So according to our concept, what will be the work done for path A? Okay. What will be the work done? From the two ends, you have to drop a perpendicular. Alright, on the volume axis. So, if I name it like this, suppose it is A, B, C, D, E. Alright, then you see, you are getting this volume. Alright, so you can write, what will be the work done? Area of A, B, D, E, A. Closed path. Closed area. So you see how I have named A, B, D, E, A. Is that clear? Look at this work done and conclude that it will be positive or negative. How you can conclude? You see initial state, this is the volume. This is the volume V1. And then in the final state, this is the volume V2. What about V2 and V1? V2 is greater than V1 means under this process volume of the system increases. So what will be the work done? Work done will be positive. Is that clear? Now, now suppose another girl has taken the system from I to F from the initial point I to F following the path B. Following the path B. 
all right so in this case for the second girl what will be the work done for path b okay how you can do again you have to draw perpendicular from the two ends so when you will draw the perpendicular then you see you are getting this enclosed area for the path b if i draw it separately you will understand this is the path b this is i this is f so you see when you are dropping the perpendicular then what is the enclosed area this is the enclosed area all right so do you think it is same as the previous one in the previous one this one was also there this area was also there all right and in this case also what is happening volume is increasing so work done will be positive but what will be the area you see area will be if i name the point this e then f you can say what will be the area it will be area of f c d e f this area all right so you see in both the cases you are taking the system from the same initial state through the same final state what you have done you have just changes the path so when you are changing the path work done changes in this case work done is bigger when you are following the path a work done is bigger because this entire area is coming and when you are taking it through the path b then work done is smaller all right so in case of thermodynamic work done work done depends on the path chosen all right next is coming work done in cyclic process so suppose in a p versus v graph the system you are taking from point a then you are taking it to the point b following path 1 all right and then you are taking it from b to a following path 2 all right so what will be the total work done this is cyclic process cyclic process means when the system get back through the initial state then it is known as the cyclic process so in this case what will be the, <coughs> what will be the total work done you see you can write like this it will be work done i am writing in symbol a1 b a1 b means work done to take it from a to b through the path 1 then plus work done to take it from b to a so i am writing it b to a i hope you have understood a1 b then b to a is that clear so how to find out what will be work done a1 b from the point a you drop a perpendicular and from the point b you drop a perpendicular on the volume axis and let us name it as cd so you see what will be work done from a to b first is a to b when i am taking then the volume is increasing what is happening volume is increasing so work done is positive here then what will be the work done it will be area under this graph or uh, area this entire area so if i draw it this is the entire area isn't it so you can write like this area of a 1 b then c then d and then a follow the path a 1 b c d a this entire area why positive because volume increases when you are moving from a to b is that clear then how to calculate b to a again from b and d you have to drop the perpendicular perpendicular is already drawn so in this case when you are taking from b to a look at the volume what is happening to the volume volume is coming from c to d means volume is decreasing all right so work done will be negative and in that case what will be area which area you are taking starting from b then you are going to a means it will be b c d you can write like this b c d then a then to this path and then b just follow these words written follow um, this letters written b c d a 
to be means if i just draw the area then this is the area for the second one then is that clear so you see if you subtract this two work done then which one is getting you are getting the area enclosed within the path isn't it so and not only that it will be positive or negative area of a 1 b c d a it is bigger so you are subtracting the smaller one from bigger one so ultimately it will be positive and which area you can write area of a 1 b 2 a just follow a 1 b 2a this is the idea this is the work done when you have taken the cyclic process in which direction in which direction when process is carried clockwise is that clear you have taken like this now let us do the same but let us carry the process anti-clockwise. Okay, next uh, video I will continue otherwise I will have the problem in uploading. Thank you children.